Welcome back to the Joe Miller Show, KOA on Hot Talk, 1080 AM, 95.1 FM. We have Pastor Carl Gallup's with us. He's a best-selling Amazon author, has three, I think, three books in the top 60. Significant Final Warning is one, The Rabbi Who Found Messiah, The Magic Man in the Sky. If you want to read any of his books, buy them. Obviously, Amazon.com is a good source for that. Uh, Pastor Gallup's used to be a police officer, now pastor at a church, and very engaged with uh, cutting-edge issues that are facing contemporary society, including the federal damage to the educational system. Pastor Gallup, thank you for staying with us, agreeing to be on for another segment. Joe, thank you for having me. It's an honor to be with you. So one of the things, uh, Pastor Gallup, we were talking about during the break is that, you know, the facts are really on the side of dialogue, not not, not this ideology they're trying to push through the schools. And one of the things that uh, we had a guest on last week talking about global warming and how now the left no longer calls it global warming. I mean, some are slipping up, still doing it. But for the most part, they've, they've characterized it as climate change now yeah. because they recognize the facts don't back up this idea of this universal global warming. In fact, right. I mean, <laughs> with the Internet, you can, so you can go back and see the articles that they published in the 1970s talking about global cooling. Um, I mean, what is there any hope at all? I mean, I, are you seeing any slivers of light in the public education system that uh, people are actually interested in truth and objective yeah. science, yeah. or are we pretty comprehensively headed in this ideological yeah. uh, direction? Well, Joe, listen, that's a brilliant question. Yes, I do see slivers of hope and, 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 and slivers of rays of light, and a lot of it is largely due to shows like yours. Uh, you know, conservative media, conservative radio, alternative media, some edges of mainstream media from time to time, uh, but but places, you, you know, like like your show, people are are hearing, they're knowing, they're they're being educated, they they they're understanding uh, the lies of, uh, under which we're living and in in which we're being told. Uh, you said a moment ago the most important thing in education is dialogue. You know, dialogue. If you don't have that, then you have indoctrination, not education. And so when, when you are told in the American government school system, these are things that are off limits. These are things you cannot talk about. These are things we will not discuss. We will discuss uh, uh, the pseudoscientific nature of evolution, but we will not discuss uh, irreducible complexity. We will not discuss the possibility of intelligent design dynamics. We will not, dis- you know, well, that's not an education. That is indoctrination. Same thing with the global warming, the climate change. Uh, man-made global warming, oh, my gosh. I mean, just, just doing a didactic reasoning and an opposite uh, reasoning of it shows people the, the, the absolute ludicrousness of it. I, I say this all the time. I say, look, folks, if, global, if man-made global warming were a fact, then think of it like this. What if we found out tomorrow that, oh, my gosh, something horrible has happened, uh, everything has reversed, we're getting ready to go into an absolute freeze. It's going to be another ice age. But don't worry. We understand the science of man-made global warming. We know how to warm the earth up. So everybody get out there. Get in your cars. Let's crank up the factories. Let's put more cows in the field for flatulence. And let's crank up the temperature <laughs> of the earth. You know, how ridiculous. Of course, right. we know that can't be done. It's because it's not happening it's really frightening because when you bring in generations of kids that are taught, this is the doctrine, you're stupid if you believe something else, but we aren't going to talk about it. Right. You know, we aren't going to talk about the criticism because it's just so moronic. It's just so stupid. I mean, it's kind of like the whole evolution thing. I went to Yale Law School, which supposedly attracts the brightest minds in the, in, in, in the world, you know. Yeah. And I challenged, I don't know how many of my classmates, on some of the fundamental issues on evolution that are problematic, such as the idea of going from simplicity to yeah. complexity. But that's yeah. never been observed. Mutations don't bring about complexity. Thank you. They actually reduce information. Yeah. And, and they just look at you with a blank stare. And, of course, in academia, and a lot of these folk are very, very bright people. They just right. never really, they've never been challenged to think about it. Right. And, well, and, and of course, part of it in academia is you've got this idea of reciprocal academic respect. You know, I'm an expert in the law. You're going to respect me and my expertise. I'm going to respect the paleontologists because that's what they've studied for 29 years. Mm-hmm. And, and, but there are so many fundamentals out there that, you know, when we shut these things down and say those are off limits, it does. I mean, it for me, it's scary because it makes it much more likely that a government can do all sorts of things to reduce 
freedom, to limit, uh, you know, not just freedom, but other areas of, of behavior in such ways yep. that we can turn our country into something totally different. And, and you've got a willing populace right behind it because they've never challenged the fundamentals. Exactly. No, brilliantly stated, Joe. And listen, every, every oppressive form of government known to man throughout history, that you call it what you want, totalitarianism, despotism, communism, socialism, whatever you want to call it, every one of them have used these, quote, educational techniques to turn their society into mind-numbed robots and complacent uh, factory B workers. That's what they want so that the elite can control. Now, America was predicated. America was founded upon a principle like nothing else in history, upon basically the, you know, the foundation of the Word of God. That didn't mean that everyone in America had to be Christians, and it didn't mean that all of our founding fathers were Jesus-loving, Bible-believing, church-going Christians. But it meant that we were not founded upon a secular foundation. We were not founded upon an, uh, uh, an atheist foundation, or a Muslim, or a Buddhist, or a Hindu foundation. No, we were founded upon Judeo-Christian principles, and there's where we established our first educational system, And the first universities established in this nation were founded with the dedicated purpose written in their constitutions to educate young men and women in the principles of the Word of God for the proliferation of the gospel of Jesus Christ. Those were the founding principles of our very first educational institutions of higher learning. So along come people like Dewey, the leftist, the socialist of the world, whatever you want to call them, and I'm not trying to be pejorative, I'm just saying what he said, when along come these kinds of people, and they look at the American culture, and it repulses them. But yet there's something very powerful about this culture that they want to possess. I mean, it's spiritual, Joe. It's demonic. And so they understood they had to dumb down these kids. They had to take out the Judeo-Christian principle. They had to kill God, the concept of God, in the minds of generations of kids. And then they had to develop what I call the government crack cocaine government handouts, government money, government funding, government grants. They had to turn the local school control into a federal control. Thus, now we have Common Core. Now we have federal grants so that public school systems in the local areas, even if they wanted to break totally from the federal government, the school system would collapse because their bus system is based upon federal monies, their lunch system is based upon federal monies, the teacher's step raises based upon federal monies, etc. This is what they wanted. They've been planning this. They've been instituting it for 150 years, starting with with this interjection of evolution, government control, government funding, the government crack cocaine, if you will, seizing from the uh, local control and giving it to the federal government and dumbing down the kids, especially in the areas of literacy. They don't and, and again, like uh, like Newman said, I mean, those with supreme allegiance to God are infinitely harder to oppress oh, and control yeah. government than others. You know, we've only got a couple of minutes left, Pastor Gallops. Uh, what's what's kind of the roadmap for recovery here? What can we do to get things back on track, or is yeah, there any hope? Thank you. Well, I, I think there is, Joe, but, you know, it took us 100 years to get here. I, I don't know how long, if, if we're going to be able to turn it around, but I tell I tell people of faith this. I say, look, the Bible tells us never to grow weary of doing good. The Bible tells us to stay engaged, be the salt, be the light, shine the light in the darkness, you know, sprinkle the salt in what's dying and decaying. I tell Christians all the time, look, register to vote, vote, get involved, stay involved, run for office, be a part of of the process. Now, I certainly don't think politics is the answer, because I predicate it, I mean, I, I cover the whole thing with the umbrella of prayer and turning our own hearts back to God. But it's, it's kind of a bottom-up thing, Joe. I mean, we've got to start at the, at, in our homes, in our families, in our churches, in our pulpits, in our pews, and right on through our local governments, to our state governments, to our federal governments. And we're going to have to, through programs like yours and the alternative media, continually educate the people as to what's happening to them. So many people don't understand, didn't know about what you and I revealed today. But they're knowing, and they're, they're learning, and they're understanding, and, 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 and this is what we're going to have to do. We're going to have to turn back to God and our historical foundations. And you know what? It's going to take more than just sitting back in our chairs and hoping it happens. I mean, it's going yes. to take some active individuals. You've got to put your, put your 
uh, legs and arms into motion, uh, you know, things are really busy, and that's a kind of a weapon that's used against people that want to be agents of change is that you've got so many things going on and not just a family, the government makes demands on you. I don't know how long it yeah. takes now to file taxes, but yeah. it's a long time. <laughs> and, and yeah. of course, not to mention the fact that you're working until like May 20th now to pay all your taxes. But the fact of it is you got to carve out time and sacrifice in order to make the changes that need to happen. And, yeah, you know, one noisy person can have a lot of impact. And so yeah. Yeah. If, if you love this country and you're listening to this show, you need to get engaged and make sure that your voice is heard on these important issues. I, Alaska, Pastor Gallup's is... We've had a lot of folk active against Common Core, and, and I'm very happy to see the activism there, but it's going to take a lot more. Pastor Gallitz, I really appreciate you being on the show. Again, Pastor Gallitz, best-selling author, get his books at Amazon.com, a number of great books out there that he's written. Uh, the uh, Final Warning, The Rabbi Who Found Messiah, Magic, in the, Magic Man in the Sky. Uh, would love to have you back again in the future, Pastor Gallitz. Thank you for being with us. Joe Miller, thank you for having me. be honored to come back. God